Time is relative. It means well, nothing. Yeah, welcome to Walnut Grove Cultural Conversations. We're two local pastors. We, oh, I, I oh. moved to the two. I moved to okay. the two, one and two. All right. Uh, sit in front of this bookshelf when we talk about things going on in our world and in the culture around us. And so as we were thinking about what to talk about this week, I found myself looking out the window at my house, and it was raining outside, and I made this noise. Ugh. The sigh. I realized the grass was turning green, which is normally something to celebrate, right? Spring is coming, the robins are here, but what I looked out and saw was a bunch of yard work coming my way, and I was not looking forward to it at all. All right, truth moment. Yeah. So I'm paying my kids a quarter a day, and I'm seeing if every day they'll go out okay. for 25 to 30 minutes and pick weeds, because <laughs> I'm so scared of the weeds overwhelming my life, because every time this season hits... The That's snow nice. melts, and it says, ha, 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 we provided water for your worst enemies. Yeah. 25 cents is a good going rate. I don't with the four like, kids, that's a not, dollar. We don't talk about uh, labor laws or are, minimum wage or Are anything. your kids tuning into our Walnut Grove Cultural Conversations? I don't know. It depends if their iPads, <laughs> cell phones, beeper, <laughs> etc. is working. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're beepers for their other so jobs paying the 25 cents. I'm just, I'm just so happy that they're excited about it. Yeah. And my son keeps saying, do you want me to buy you a paint set at the dollar <laughs> store? I'm like, he's just like a flush, man. Remember those days when you're just like flush with cash? Because yes. work, work is like extra. Work is exciting. Work is joyful. Yes. And then you hit like seven and oh. you start to realize like work is not all that enjoyable all the time. No, it's not. It's kind of a burden. Yeah. The stuff that you want to get starts to get more expensive and the time that you have seems to fade away a little bit faster and faster yeah. which is actually interesting because when we stop and as christians when we take it back to the original picture of work it's probably supposed to look more like what my kids are experiencing than what we talk about yeah right than the sigh Ugh. yeah growl that was more of a growl yeah a little bit of a combo of both yeah it was a cor corral sure <laughs> great so but we wanted to kind of take a step back and be like okay if that's how we should actually respond to work where does that come from and how can we kind of get a biblical basis for this and my mind automatically shoots to genesis very early on in the bible actually in the first i think it's in chapter two where we see perfection creation in its perfect state where man and god are able to walk amongst each other in the garden and one of the things that you find there that's very interesting is actually Adam has a job. Yeah, he's partnering with God in the work of being fruitful. Yeah. Right? And eventually with Eve, multiplying. Yes, and that's this interesting thing that we like to think that work is from the fallen, is from the devil, and from Satan. But what we realize is God gave Adam a job. And so that starts to give us, needs to allow us to form a new theology a new understanding of what work actually is. Yeah, Scripture, especially in the New Testament, comes up and picks up right where the Old Testament leaves off with work. And in places like Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, we're told that we're supposed to do all our work as if we're working for the boss Jesus, right? Because it all is meant to give him glory. It's all meant to partner with him. And in fact, I think in what Ephesians, I'm trying to think what chapter, God has prepared good works for us in advance yeah. in hopes that we can then give him glory. And so if God's saying, listen, work matters to me because through your work, your values are displayed, mm. then maybe work needs to start mattering to us too. Yeah. And what's interesting is, back, back to that Genesis passage, only a chapter later, we're introduced to this thing theologically called the fall, where there's this brokenness that enters into the world because of the choice that mankind has made, right? 
that humankind said that we want to be as gods, and then there's a penalty to that, and what enters into the world is sin and brokenness. And you right. see this well, think manifest. About this. Like, Adam and Eve are saying, God, we don't want to do your work anymore. Ooh. We want to do our work. Yeah. We want to do things for us. Mm-hmm. Right? God says, you can have my kingdom here, you can have the abundance of the garden, and they say, no, we want to build our own fiefdom, our own kingdom. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things, I think, that... We as Americans and we as um, Christians in the Western world need to kind of wrestle with when we talk about developing this theology of work, of this balancing of the scales of, of God's kingdom, our kingdom, what, who are we building for, what are we building for, what are we working for, and that's what that Colossians 3.23 verse calls us back to. Right, we sometimes get into this game of percentages, and we say, okay, God, I owe 90%. We know, kind of like, okay, God, I owe 90% of my stuff. And at the best, you you get 10%. Mm. Or we say, okay, like 95.5 or like 98.2 or like 99, you get the leftovers. Mm-hmm. Or like, I don't really get into giving or, but like this theology of the Bible says, you know, everything that you have, everything from the talent that you use to the time that you enjoy, it all belongs to God. And so if it all belongs to God, it's not wasted. It's not meant to be just frivolously used. It's meant to be us partnering with God for a greater purpose. And in the midst of work like that, suddenly we find the same value that Adam was supposed to feel like. We find the same significance that we're meant to embrace. Yeah, because what you find is you tie into, instead of working for it that's very small, which is your own and temporary kingdom, and temporary, you now invest in something that is much larger that is much longer lasting eternal you're working for you're working for a kingdom that has actual significance that will have impact on other people that will have impact on those around you that the delayed gratification right we often maybe give ourselves the delayed gratification of making it to the cruise in the summer versus like thinking about the delayed gratification of the god in heaven looking at us with a smile we often don't think of god that way But it is possible on the other side of this life and during this life as we work for his kingdom, right, in whatever we're doing, when we do the work in partnership with God, that the God who created everything is happy with us. And we might, at the end, hear these these words of, well Well done, done. my good and faithful servant. That should be uh, the ultimate call of delayed gratification, right? The fact that the God of heaven would be glad in what you have done. Thank you.